Uh, if there is a housing bubble, then I want to give y'all my opinion on that. Uh, just to leave y'all with something that y'all y'all might be able to lean into in order to be able to get to that bag, or and or capitalize off of it. Shout out in to the my dog Jay Wood. 2008 financial crisis, a few savvy skeptics understood what would later become obvious: the mortgage market was teetering on the brink of collapse. One of the investors who saw it coming now believes financial disaster could be brewing in the housing market yet again. This time, the threat is from flooding. This one is better. Dave Burt, who was profiled in Michael Lewis's best-selling book, The Big Short, and saw one of his colleagues, played by Brad Pitt in the movie adaptation, says the fallout from flood risk could resemble the extraordinary correction seen 15 years ago. And then that if you guys have not ever seen The Big Short or read the book, I actually have both. Um, it's a great book and it's a better movie. It's a great book and it's a better movie. If you have not seen The Big Short in, that, in order to understand exactly what happened in the 2008. As a matter of fact, that's a part of y'all homework. Shout out to Brock. I'm going to be reading Super Chat shortly. As a part of y'all homework, go watch The Big Short. Shout out to Marcia and shout out to Brock. Go watch The Big Short. As a part of y'all homework, I want y'all to go watch The Big Short. And the reason why I want y'all to go watch The Big Short is because it gives y'all insight and information on exactly what happened during the 2008 housing crisis in order for us to leapfrog off of that and learn the lessons so that you guys can understand what's being communicated right now, okay? Let's continue. This person who they're seeking insight from of what's happening within the housing market actually is the guy that Brad Pitt played, okay? Brad Pitt played a guy that also was one of the people that capitalized off of and made billions of dollars as a result of what happens in a house housing market. Shout out to Marcel. Let's continue. It happens. I don't mind giving y'all homework either. I love giving y'all homework. America's housing market. Did you feel that perhaps Brad Pitt maybe was more better suited to playing you? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think he did a great job. It was. It was a really entertaining uh, movie, even though they may, might not have gotten every technical point exactly right. I thought it was a good explainer, a good explainer movie for that, for that whole saga. This time, Bert says that flooding is easily among the most mispriced climate hazards in the US real estate market, especially for single family properties. Our base case correction scenario leads to home value losses of about 800 billion in aggregate terms so a pretty meaningful hit uh even to a 40 trillion dollar market so let me break it down from a c student's perspective of what's being communicated and how it is that i'm pivoting and how i've pivoted as far as making my investment strategy work for me especially with regard to real estate now during the pandemic my wife and i had the opportunity of living in south florida and it was a great experience it was one of the best decisions that I ever made in my life because it changed my perspective towards the possibility of traveling uh, and living in the places that I travel uh, for extended periods of time, right? Uh, I think that Florida was probably the best managed state during the pandemic. And shout out to Governor DeSantis, Ron DeSantis. But here's the other caveat to it. When we started to evaluate if we were interested in buying a place down there, and initially I said yes, but then I said no. And the reason that I said no was because of exactly what's being communicated here. I think that climate risk, whether or not you want to acknowledge it or not, the climate continues to change. The factors behind why it's changing is what, what's being debated from a political perspective between the left and the right. But the reality is that climate is being fucked up in the South and in the West, and in the East. And as the polar ice caps continue to melt and we continue to see more hurricanes and the earth continues to warm and you continue to see the ocean sea level rising uh, this many inches and you have the core, core of army engineers and all that other type of stuff trying to solve for what's going on. One of the reasons why I made my capital investment in the Midwest is because despite the fact that the Midwest early in the 80s and the late 80s and the 90s and even in the early 2000s, seen a de divestment of more people leaving and going south going and going west, I believe that everybody is going to start pivoting and coming back up 
to the Midwest. Now, why do I say that? Because of climate change specifically. Did you know that the Great Lakes had about 21%? Actually, the majority of the world's, the largest body of water as far as the world's fresh water, water, water resources. The Midwest, the Great Lakes, has the overwhelming, the largest body of water of fresh water resources. In addition to that, as the climate continues to warm and you see more and more things happen throughout the United States of America, you are going to see people starting to move back up into the middle because it is going to be a large level of devastation happening all across your borders, including New York, Arizona. It's going to be unbearable as far as the heat, California, and especially in Texas and New York. I mean, Texas and Florida. And so what I'm pivoting towards is looking at what's going to happen over the next century slash half a century, the next 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, because I think that he's absolutely right. I think that you're going to see a disruption of what's going on in the real estate markets in most of these highly desirable areas. And this is just my personal opinion. You're going to see a disruption of what you see happening in the real estate market. And one of those disruptions are going to come from the fact that flooding, which is one of the reasons why I tell y'all to get the fuck out of Louisiana, flooding is going to play a, a huge role in where people choose to relocate and whether or not homes are going to be purchased in those specific areas. But let's continue. Flooding is recognized as the most common natural disaster in the US, and yet despite that, the risk of flooding to housing markets is feared to be far greater than current government estimates. Millions of households in the US and worldwide are thought to be exposed to this hidden time bomb, an issue that's predicted to worsen as the climate emergency deepens. Several cities across the country, stretching from Los Angeles on the Pacific seaboard, New York on the East Coast, and Cape Coral in Florida, are now, on my father's grave, I have not watched this video. I always, more often than not, make sure that I pull the video and review it, and I might watch a small clip of it. And I seen the, uh, the investor guy from the Big Short in there, and so I said, well, I got to review this for the people uh, based off of the title and what it is that I see this, you know, I see this guy, and he's a guy that I highly respect from an investment perspective with regard to real estate. I have not seen this video, but I literally just told y'all this, and that's on my father's grave are known to have a number of properties heavily exposed to flood risk. Researchers say the cost of unrealized flood risk in the US is a growing threat to the economic stability of households, as well as the broader mortgage market. I think that the, the real problem is that a lot of the biggest risks are actually in developing nations. Peter M, Peter Investor M says, two thirds of the earth is made of a body of water. Yeah, but the problem is the overwhelming majority of that water is actually salt water. And so you have no you see no infrastructure spending, especially with the Biden administration or the United States of America um, with regard to desalinization, meaning removing the salt from the water in order for it to be drinkable uh, and for it to be potable. For most people, you do not see that capital investment. There is a problem, a water crisis happening across the United States that is not being promoted, that is not being talked about. Uh, but I pay attention to it and I do the research because it informs me on how it is that I need to pivot from an investment perspective. That's why y'all need to go back and watch the video inside of the Patreon of the eight things that I look for when I'm looking to make an investment because it, does, it doesn't just apply to stocks. It also applies to every other facet of life that you're looking to make an investment in. But desalinization, there are other countries that are making capital, inv capital investments and, three, and desalinization. Just because two-thirds of the earth is made up of water doesn't mean that it's actually water that we can use without going through a heavy, um, huge investment process in order to ensure that it's, it's drinkable for the majority of people. That's just a fact. So it's not about the value of homes causing mortgage defaults. It's more that an acute event occurs and actually the governments are unable to handle the losses that come with that event. And then you end up with this being more of a humanitarian crisis, which obviously affects everyone to the extent that we're, we're all linked in this global economy. Extreme weather events brought on by the climate crisis are already evident so too are the risks to people's homes. 
2022 saw apocalyptic floods in Pakistan following a record-breaking monsoon rainfall. The disaster submerged one-third of the South Asian country and damaged more than 2.2 million houses. In the same year, Nigeria faced its worst flooding in a decade. The destruction impacted nearly 3 million people across the country. So here's the thing. When you see this stuff happening and they're referencing different countries, but then they're bringing it back to exactly what's happening here in the United States and what could potentially happen. What you guys have to start paying attention to when y'all have to start leaning into is making investments based off of a long term view instead of a short term thought. A long term view instead of a short term thought, because the only thing that we usually do is we have a me too mindset. I seen these hoes started selling bundles of hair. And then everybody all of a sudden started selling bundles of hair. <laughs> everybody moved to Atlanta and everybody went to Atlanta. And now you got chicks getting shot up there. Now everybody is moving over to Houston and so they fucking up Texas. And so when I look at different places and I'm looking to figure out where it is that I want to make the majority of my investments, I don't invest based off of a me too perspective. I invest based off of what I see things or where I see things going in 10 to 20 years from now. Killing hundreds as water submerged farmland and infrastructure. Cities like the Indonesian capital of Jakarta and Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam are sinking too, in part due to excessive groundwater extraction for drinking and everyday use by residents, making homes in these low-lying areas even more vulnerable to flooding. Meanwhile, Hurricane Ian, which devastated the Americas, was found to be by far the costliest natural disaster of 2022, and it's racking get up worse. roughly $100 billion in losses and exacerbating an already urgent housing crisis in Florida. In the UK, at least one in six people in England are recognized as being at risk from flooding from both rivers and the sea. That is huge. One in six people? One in six people? What is that, 18, 16 to 18 percent, something like that? Of the entire population in that country is at risk of flooding? Even insurance companies are starting to pull out of certain states. You can't even get insured in certain states as far as flood insurance because they already have predicted and is expecting natural disasters to wipe out a majority of the homes and they are not looking to rebuild them in these horrible spaces. I'm telling y'all. See, densely populated cities such as London, Cardiff and Edinburgh could see damage increase by more than 25%, even under a scenario where global heating is limited to 1.8 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Here in England's southwest city of Bristol. Now, when y'all say it's funny because Jerome says the weather is what makes the Midwest horrible. Anton can move around with his resources. He stay gone. I'm not talking about where you live. Y'all can live wherever y'all want to live. You mi you missing a you missing a plane, right? You missing a flight. I'm talking about where you invest. Where were you, where will your investments be best protected? Because just because you invest in real estate don't mean that you're making a smart investment. People lose their shirt every single day with regard to real estate. You can live wherever you want. Absolutely, I'm still going to be spending my, my winters in Florida. I just won't own any property there. Absolutely, I plan on traveling the world and living in different places three to six months at a time. I'm just not looking to own any property in certain places. So when I'm talking about capital investment, I'm saying that every investment that you make, not just in real estate, but in everything that you do, Look at the long term view and look at the possibility of having an exit strategy. All of my property and all of my because when we say Midwest weather, they're saying it because the Midwest experiences all four seasons. We're going to have winters. We're going to have summers. Right now it's 80, 90 degrees here in Metro Detroit. Right. We're going to have all of the different all of the different things that come along with. And I see y'all. Uh, but I'm definitely going to read the Super Chats in a, in a second. I'm talking about where will your kids be able to inherit, inherit the things that you invest in? Where will your kids' kids be able to lean into as far as the investments that you make today? Can you outlive your investments to where it doesn't sour or it goes down because the market is determined by who's willing to buy it and who's willing to sell it? And so I make my investments with a long-term view. Live wherever you want to live. I very much expect to spend some time in California. I'm not looking to invest in California. 
because it's too many too many factors that is bad for me to invest in California. So when y'all making y'all investments, don't look at it based off of where you want to live. Look at it based off of where you want the majority of your income to come from. There's too many opportunities that's available. Let's continue. Local policymakers have described the risk from flooding and rising sea levels as a humongous threat. And that warning comes as thousands of new homes are already being planned in parts of the city identified as acutely vulnerable to flooding. I sat down with Paul Bates, a UK flooding expert and professor at the University of Bristol, to find out more. Most people, when they think about flooding and the climate crisis, think that, that things will get awful lot worse into the future. But it overlaps the fact that flooding is not well managed now. We've got a lot of buildings in the UK that are in flood zones, like, like where we're sitting, um, and that doesn't really change. And, and the better we manage emissions, the, the greater the percentage of, of risk that's with us now. So if, if the increase stays below 10%, then that means obviously that 90% of the risk we'll face in the future is already with us. In the UK, expected damages from flooding are estimated to be around $870 million per year. This is not only seen Which as is a usually underestimated. on the economy, but also a considerable sum of misery for those affected. Not everyone is as concerned about the potential impact of flooding, however. Many investors remain skeptical about the impact of climate risks on their portfolios, while almost two-thirds of UK households don't see flood risk as a problem that they'll need to worry about. Most people, when given an option to choose for themselves or make smart investments, choose wrong. Most people don't even know how to look at investments the correct way. Most people are literally just walking around like bumbling idiots. They have no clue on what's on the horizon. No clue on what's on the horizon. And it's actually in the government's best interest to keep you out of the know, out of the loop, and not focused on the thing that's best for you because panic is actually bad for the economy and it's bad for the money. And so if... They can secretly do two things, which is A, kick the can down the road so that it's not their problem, and then B, try to figure out how to solve for it proactively without you knowing about it, then that's exactly what they're going to do. Because panic, widespread, widespread panic, the worst thing, let's just say, for example, let's say hypothetically, and I'm not saying that this is true, but let's just say hypothetically that Florida was going to be a piece of shit in 25 years, right? What makes you think that everybody that has a vested interest in seeing Florida successful, Southern Florida specifically, what makes you think with all of the incoming hurricanes and all of the damage that could happen and all of this other type of stuff, what makes you think that anybody that has a vested interest, especially business partners, would want to see that happen or would want you to react based off of that? If the banking industry know that they're susceptible to collapsing due to higher risk and more people not paying their bills, then why would you think that they would release that news to the general public instead of solving for it and pivoting as far as how it is that they allocate their resources and portfolio? Why would they want you to pull money out of the bank and then put it and divert it elsewhere? Why would they not want you to have a 30-year mortgage even understanding that they know that you're going to pay double and triple for the house by the time that it's paid for? Everything bad for you is hidden from you. And it's a reason for that because it's profitable for other people to continue to keep you out of the loop. And so why would they tell you the thing that's best for you understanding that it's going to hurt their pocketbooks? Let me answer that question for you. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They want to sell more houses. They want to build more buildings. They want you to take out more 30-year loans that you're going to probably outlive. They don't want you to assess the risk because it then lowers the amount of money that they're going to make and capitalize off of you. Why would they want you to buy assets? They don't want you to buy assets. I'm going to read Super Chat shortly, Brock. Why would they want you to buy assets and they don't want you to buy assets? They don't want you paying off your mortgage early. Why would they want you to pay off your mortgage early? You know how devastating that is based off of their projected revenue that they're looking to make? If everybody paid off their mortgage early, do you know how fucked up the banks would be? You would be great, but the banks would be fucked up. They'd rather you be fucked up and they be great. 
it's not in your best interest not to be not to have debt in their eyes they want you to have more credit card debt they want you to take out business loans listen the biggest lie that they told the black community is that they don't want you to have business loans in order to grow your business. They just know that you're not going to pay it back and you don't qualify it for. If they can get you to pay it back, they gladly give you a trillion dollars because they know that that's more money in their pocket in the form of interest, which means that they can fatten up what it is that they share with the shareholders and they get bigger bonuses. I want you to take out more money. Why would I want you to be not take out money outside of the idea that I know that you would actually fuck up my, my, my balance sheet because I know you're not paying for it because the risk is too high in order to be able to loan it to you. If they could take out predatory loans for everybody and ensure that everybody that can't afford them actually really paid them back, that would be the best thing that ever happened to the banks in history because they get all of the fees, higher interest rates, they make more money, and you're the one that suffer as a result of it. It's just a fact. Y'all got to wake up. Y'all have to wake up. Y'all behind the eight ball. If you watching this show and you're not a part of the Patreon and you got debt, credit card debt, housing debt, car debt, student loan debt. Somebody was already planning on going out with their homegirl. Somebody was looking to take a trip this weekend. Somebody was looking to do something that wasn't in their best interest. And hopefully I stopped you from doing it so that you can make the sacrifice that allows for you to live the life that you're supposed to live. Tap in. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat.